State. Um, I just have a couple of additional updates for you, um, some of which was provided by the Department of Defense this morning, uh, but I wanted to make sure you all had this information as well. As you may have seen, the airport, as Jake noted, is currently open for military flight operations as well as limited commercial flight operations. And throughout the night, uh, nine C-17s arrived delivering equipment and approximately 1,000 troops. Additionally, seven C-17s have departed. These flights lifted approximately 700 to 800 passengers. And we can confirm 165 of these passengers are American citizens. The rest are a mix of SIV applicants and third uh, country nationals. Um, and I would also note that, um, in addition, um, our, uh, the, the intention is to have additional flights out this morning. There's obviously going to be operational updates that will be provided on a regular basis by the Department of Defense. But as you saw them brief out, our focus over the last 24 to 48 hours has been securing the airport uh, and ensuring that we can begin to expedite flights of both American citizens, uh, SIV applicants, and others out. Um, I also just wanted to note that this morning on a different topic, um, Biden administration officials uh, joined a meeting of the U.S. Conference of Mayors to discuss our eviction prevention efforts. Uh, CDC Director Rochelle Walensky provided an update on the state of the pandemic and Associate Attorney General Vanita Gupta reiterated ways that mayors across the country can work closely with state and local courts to set up eviction diversion programs in their city. This meeting is just the latest in our efforts to communicate and work with local officials to ensure we're getting assistance out to keep people in their homes. I know we've been here a while, but I know there are lots of topics out there. Go ahead, Josh. Uh, thanks, Jen. Uh, with regard to the booster shots, uh, how many shots does the U.S. have available for boosters? And will supplying boosters have any impact on U.S. vaccine donations around the world? So um, let me first note that tomorrow the COVID-19 team and our health and medical experts will host a briefing and we'll discuss next steps as it relates to boosters. I would also uh, note for your uh, planning that you can expect to hear from the president on this topic as well uh, following their briefing. So I will leave it to them to provide additional details uh, and to answer what I know are your good questions about data and an understanding of what leads to decisions along those lines. On the supply uh, component of that, I'm sure they will address that, Josh, but one of the things we have said repeatedly, and I will note, I said back in May, Jeff Zions said again in July, is that part of our operational focus was ensuring we had enough supply to provide booster shots, should that be a decision made by the FDA. So that has been in our planning processes for months now, and certainly we've uh, planned for this contingency, and we'll wait for a formal announcement. Does the, the President plan and the First Lady plan to get booster shots? Certainly, if they are recommended, uh, once a formal uh, announcement or a uh, briefing is done, uh, they will certainly plan to follow the guidelines, of course. What's the rest of the, his week look like? like? He's up to Camp David now. Is he still going to Wilmington? What, what's the schedule? Well, I know, I think Rachel asked this earlier, so the President will uh, return uh, to the White House. I don't have an exact time for you, but tomorrow he will uh, both be uh, doing an interview with George Stephanopoulos for ABC, uh, and he will also, where he will, of course, I'm certain, be uh, speaking to the situation on the ground in Afghanistan. Uh, he'll also be delivering uh, some remarks on COVID as well. In terms of additional uh, portions of the schedule next week, we're still working those through. So I don't have an update for you at this moment in time. Go ahead. Thank you. On COVID, is the White House concerned that moving forward with boosters could make it that much harder to get more unvaccinated Americans to get that initial shot? Well, one of the pieces that I expect our COVID team to speak to uh, tomorrow is our operational plans as it relates to uh, ensuring we are making sure everybody is vaccinated and following FDA uh, and CDC guidelines. Uh, I think we, what you can expect to hear from them uh, is that we are going to follow uh, some of the best practices we have used to date, uh, which is providing access, providing information. Uh, and right now, uh, we're in a place where we, have, um, we are uh, focused on providing access, of course, to vaccines around the country and communities around the country through a range of mechanisms. So we're actually at an easier operational point in this regard than we were several months ago. But yes, we understand it's going to take uh, a significant operational focus, educational focus, uh, and um, you know, PR focus to get the information out once it's finalized.